today I'm lucky enough to be sitting down with Nick Blinko. So he's a um, paracyclist and quite been part of Parafed Auckland for a while now. How long have you been with Parafed Auckland? I think with Parafed Auckland uh, about four years now. Um, oh, awesome, yeah. And uh, yeah, amazing support. Um, being, I guess, new into the para sport environment, it's been great to have a community um, to be involved with. Wicked, yeah. So we're gonna just nut down today um, some of Nick's journey, um, what he's kind of learned, kind of the um, foundations that he's built as he's progressed through his career, and what we look forward to in the future as well. Um, so we'll kick off. So do you just want to start by kind of introducing your journey, Nick, and um, what kind of got you into paracycling and things like that? Yeah, so I guess um, my journey, I guess, starts probably uh, 2010. I had a, a rugby injury that paralyzed my left arm uh, called a brachial plexus injury. So I guess up until that point, I was trying to be an aspiring rugby player, uh, playing New Zealand age group rugby uh, with North Harbour as well. Um, won a world championships with the New Zealand under 19s and then an uh, injury, I guess, changed my life. So um, I spent quite a couple of years, I guess, rehabbing, um, seeing well, what does, where does life take you? And then sport uh, is a huge part of my life for a long part, of, uh, you know, pretty much my whole life. So finding uh, athletics was my first calling. So I spent, uh, I think, three years in the athletics program. Uh, that's what I did as a teenager growing up. So I thought uh, easy transition into 100 meters, 200 meters sprinting. But uh, uh, my body, I guess, was telling me otherwise. I was getting quite a lot of soft tissue issues, um, hamstring injuries. Um, so I had to look at uh, different uh, opportunities and paracycling, um, I guess, put me uh, in their development program after uh, doing a, a development camp, I think five years ago, uh, fast tracked into their development program. Um, and I found track cycling was my calling more than the road side of things, being more of a power athlete. So getting into that, um, yeah, about five years ago, started my track cycling journey. Oh, cool. Do you, do you find that you still get like some of the rush that you got with rugby and the excitement that led that kind of occurred then as well? Do you f find that replicated with? Yeah, I think it's that I think with competing. Um, and I think that's with rugby. It was always the unknown of what's going to happen uh, each game. Um, and with cycling, I guess you have a lot more control to an extent about what you think will happen in a, in a race. But then there's also that rush of adrenaline of going, you know, 60 to 70 kilometers an hour, uh, being mm -hmm. on the edge, being a para athlete out of, a bit out of control. Uh, yeah. Will you crash? Will you not? I guess that's a bit of that adrenaline that comes through from rugby. Yeah. So you, you mentioned um, doing that kind of development and that ID path as well during that i mean how long was it a week a weekend it was a weekend so yeah three-day camp um yeah it was, it was just amazing to learn so they had emma foy down there as well so she's the current uh world champion uh on the tandem and she was just talking about her journey and um straight away i guess uh doing testing they could say hey you know you're you could put out well over a thousand watts, which for as a cyclist is, is uh, what you kind of aim for and then growing from there. Um, so I thought, oh, you know, this is a great sport for me. But mm -hmm. I think with sport as well, it takes time. Um, and I was coming from athletics and a rugby background. I kind of thought I'd just go straight into um, being fast track to Rio. Uh, this would be easy, but uh, ha I had a huge learning curve, especially having a disability as well, learning how to ride a bike again, what uh, body position would be perfect for my disability. And I think that's what I guess took a little bit longer and every athlete has that kind of journey is mm -hmm. some are quite a steep, um, steep, I guess, uh, rise to 
the top, whereas mine was a bit, has been a little bit more steady, um, slowly improving, finding ways to get better and better. Mm. And so how did you work with, um, I mean, did you have a coach during that period of understanding how to use your body now that you had this kind of new awareness and this new, I'm not going to say obstacle, but understanding of your body and how to work with it? Uh, my coach, uh, Matt Archibald, he was a former, well, he at the time was a, a top New Zealand sprinter. He was third at the world champs for a kilometre time trial. So I guess in terms of having someone who'd been there before, there wasn't um, anyone to replicate or help me in that situation. So it has very much been trial and error. Mm. especially in cycling there's not a lot of room for error because that error ends in you ending up on the floor which has happened a couple of times but I guess that's um, what we've tried over the years so where I start where I say I was five years ago to what I'm doing now and even trialing new things with a new arm brace at the moment to try and get faster and uh, try um new techniques to start faster so it's very much uh uh in a lot of lot of ways uh groundbreaking in terms of technology and my disability yeah yeah i imagine it would be and so what in terms of your like routine i mean we talked about before we came on the recording about you having to balance um a family and your full-time job as well as train and be able to perform and sort your body out to be able to do what you want it to do um so what what do you think are some of the most important things that you do day to day to make sure you can manage all of those things and get them all in the right place for you Um, I plan, I guess, a week, at least a week in advance so that I know, you know, what do I prioritize in my life, uh, family, work, training, how does it all fit together? So having, I have a calendar that I um, put in all those things so I know what's happening throughout my week, Um, know when I'm, where I'm training, when I'm training. Um, when's work time, when's family time. So it's very much having a plan. Um, and those things do move around and it's being flexible as well. And mm-hmm. I guess with cycling, sometimes, um, yeah, finding times, uh, you know, maybe 6 a.m. in the morning or, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night sometimes is the only time you can train. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's making sure you have that planning and stick to it. So, I also have uh, my coach uh, inputs into a system called Training Peaks. So I have a look in there. I know what sessions I've got for the next week. Uh, I know how many sessions a day I have, uh, how long they'll take approximately. So then I can really plan my days and my weeks. Do you find it's um, like how much work do you do resilience wise? I mean, I know that some of the people that I coach and like even myself as, as an athlete w- with what I like to train, that sometimes you look at the the whiteboard or the drawing board at the beginning of the session and it's just kind of a bit of a ugh, kind of mood about it. Um, so what do you got? Do you just kind of suck it up and get going with it? Or how do you manage that kind of never ending emotion that goes with being a human as well, as well as an athlete? Yeah, I think with a sport, especially high performance sport, um, you know, I talk about no, there's no shortcuts. So you've got to put in that hard work. So when you do see those sessions, yeah, there's the the side of thing, um, part of the human emotion to go, oh, not this session. Or, yeah, really look at it and go, hey, if I can smash this session, um, you know, it's building for that next session, that next race. Um, and even if the session doesn't go too well, it's looking at, well, what did you learn from it? You know, did I not hit the watts that I wanted to in that session? How am I going to build next week and next week or or learn from that? So I think it's that uh, old cliche, no pain, no gain. And <laughs> I, I really, um, my wife often says, I don't know how you push yourself to that extreme, but I buzz off it. I love being able to um, really hurt myself. Yeah, <laughs> that's a rare um, pleasure, I think. <laughs> but that's awesome to see how you manage that, especially. 
Um, and so does that kind of align with your philosophy that kind of just push hard, otherwise like risk and reward kind of vibe or yeah. What, what else kind of do you encompass in your philosophy? Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, the thing is, is, you know, being smart. So you can't push hard all the time. It's really uh, trusting your body and knowing, and I guess that comes with experience as well and, and time doing it going, Hey, when do I need to back off? When do I need to push harder? Um, but it is that, um, uh, that philosophy of no shortcuts and, and putting in the hard work, you will get the rewards. There's nothing, um, you know, that, that doesn't come from hard work and mm. it doesn't happen overnight. So as say I've taken five years to, to really um, be on um, top six in the world, but I know I can get better and better and better. So, and mm. it's only going to come from uh, putting in that hard work. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And so, I mean, I'm sure that it's very uncertain at the moment because we have only just entered into alert level three. Um, but what kind of is looking forward for you? Yeah, what have you got planned? What are you training for? Is it kind of a bit of the unknown as well? Um, I guess a little bit of the unknown, I guess, because we don't know worldwide what's, what's going to happen in the next six months, 12 months. Um, mm -hmm. Just been released um, this week is World Champs are in Rio, Brazil next year in March. Um, so I guess that's the first and foremost is that's the long term, next long term goal. Uh, I'll be seeing if there's any uh, national competition. So often we do Southland Champs. Um, nationals um, domestically so it's really just I look back what I was doing 12 months ago what am I doing now am I ahead of where I was last year uh, because you kind of know what your calendar and your program most likely will be so mm -hmm. I've just keep improving just um, make yourself better uh, but it's not putting too much pressure on it yourself at, at the moment because we are uncertain. It's just keeping on top of, of your training, keeping fit. Mm, and I guess it's kind of what you can control and what you can't at all. Yes. It's setting all those little mini goals at, at the moment. You're not sh So what are you going to do in training? Uh, what are you, what's your goal? So, if I, I've got, you know, four week training block at the moment, I know what my sessions are. What's my little goals at the moment over those four weeks um, and, and achieving from there. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. We'll finish it up with one of my favorite questions. Cause I think it's, I don't know. I just love this question, but um, so what advice do you think you would give yourself five years ago? If you were going to meet your five year old ago self, what would you, what would you say to him? I'm um, probably be, yeah, just stay patient and not worry about, the big goals and um so five years ago you know my goal right then was go to Rio and mm. I was disappointed and missing out but um it's just being patient and and just seeing you know that's the ultimate goal but you know it's what what else have I achieved along the way uh, world champs and and you know just getting out there being fit um inspiring you know you, younger people with disabilities to get out, do sport and just achieve what you want to achieve, whether that's mm -hmm. on the national or international stage. So really, yeah, just stay patient and things will come. That's awesome. Well, you heard it here, guys. Um, this is Nick talking about how he's kind of managed himself um, over the last 10 years now and going forward with with it all and how he's become a paracyclist and everything. Um, but you can talk to him on, I'll put the Facebook, um, Hannah, how you can connect with him via Facebook or Instagram um, in the description below. So just head over and um, I'm sure I'd be happy to hear from anyone that wants to get to know more. Um, and then as always, just hit the subscribe button so you can hear more. But obviously you can see these videos on our website, on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, and we'll keep pushing to make them more and more available for you guys as we go. Other than that, thank you so much, Nick, for coming by. I really appreciate having the time with you and being able to talk to you about everything. It fascinates me because it's a world that I kind of only get to sneak peek, have a look into um, when I get to talk to athletes like yourself. So thank you so much for coming by. 
um, and chatting. No, thank you very much. Awesome, guys. See you guys next episode. Bye.